Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 1980 film Cannibal Apocalypse, which is also known as Apocalypse Dom Domani, as well as Invasion of the Flesh Hunters. This is a film directed by Antonio Margheriti, I don't know if I said his name correctly, uh, Margheriti, or Erti, uh, an Italian director. Uh, it stars John Saxon, who is pretty much the lead guy in this. Uh, John Saxon has said in interviews about this film that he wasn't aware that it was a cannibal movie at first. So when he found that out, he was pretty sickened by it. And he honestly felt kind of bad that he was in the movie. Because, yeah, because he, he wasn't really made aware of what this film was about until after he already signed and committed to the film. And he's claimed to ever, he has, he has actually said that he's never actually seen the movie, and he was fine with its banning in the UK, claiming it was foul and in bad taste. And he pretty much took the role because he needed the money. And uh, so, I guess some people look at this role that he has in this as a pretty strained role by him. I thought it was actually a pretty good performance by John Saxon, so he's one of the main reasons why I actually like this movie. Um, so anyway, I don't know if you heard that or not. My, my foot just popped. <laughs> just talk about cannibal apocalypse and boom, uh, my foot just decided to just pop. Uh, but anyway, John Saxon, he's in it as Norman Hopper. You have Elizabeth Turner who plays his wife, Jane, uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici. He plays Charlie Bukowski. Uh, he's an actor that has been in a lot of uh, Italian uh, horror films. He's also known as John Morgren. Uh, that's another name of his. He was in a Cannibal Apocalypse. This film, he was also in Cannibal for Rocks. As, and he was also Bob in uh, City of the Living Dead. So, um, you have Cinzia de Carolis, who plays Mary. You have uh, Tony King as uh, Wallace as Tom Thompson you have Wallace Wilkinson as Captain McCoy Ramiro Olivieros who plays Dr. Phil Mendez uh, Josh, John Garrison plays a policeman and you have uh, Mae Heatherly who plays uh, Nurse Helen that's pretty much that's the main cast of this movie for the most part it uh, it's written by Antonio Margariti and uh, Dardano Sacchetti and it features music by Alexander Blanksteiner. A weird name, but I actually thought he did a good job with the score. If that's his real name, I, I like the score for this. It was a really uh, funky mix of uh, John Carpenter uh, and um, like, like uh, what was the other? Damn it. It was like a funky mix of John Carpenter and Goblin. So, you know, Goblin, the, the Italian composer uh, who's done a lot of music for uh, uh, Jar Dario Argento films and other Italian horror movies. So it's like a fun mix of the two. And uh, it's definitely one of the, the things about the film I definitely really enjoyed. It also features cinematography by Fernando Arribas and it's edited by Giorgio Sal Sarellanja. I'm sorry. It's, I apologize for all this flubbing of these names. I don't know how to pronounce Italian names. I'm not Italian. Um, but anyway, the film is a movie that I've been curious about because, you know, the cast, John Saxon. I'm a big fan of John Saxon. And uh, I, I, like I said earlier, I said I like this. And I'm happy to say, I'm happy to say that finally I saw a John Saxon film from the year 1980 that wasn't disappointing and wasn't a piece of shit. So, uh, finally the streak of uh, John Saxon uh, crappy movies is over. And maybe it's because I was just... I, I, I was a little bit more lenient on this. I don't know. Maybe it was in a good mood. Maybe it's... I had my expectations lowered because I've had a pretty bad string of movies during this marathon where a lot of them had just been awful. So maybe just the fact that this film had more than a few things that I liked about it, I ended up kind of giving it more credit than it might deserve. But this is my honest opinion after first time view of this, and I'd say I liked it. I thought it, 
thought uh, Cannibal Apocalypse is an above average flick. I think there was only a few things about it that I didn't like, and I'll get to those soon enough. Um, the film opens up with a flashback to the Vietnam War, complete with stock footage uh, from other Vietnam War, you know, basically from news footage from the Vietnam War that might have aired on TV. And th this, it's a cheap movie. Um, so, yeah, they use stock footage. I would have preferred they didn't, but they did. But it wasn't really, the movie wasn't nothing but stock footage. So that kind of made me leery of it in the beginning because I'm like, oh God, there were those Italian horror films with nothing but stock footage. But that's not really what happened here. So um, there's only a little bit of stock footage and the rest of the film is shot on location. So it starts with the flashback to the Vietnam War where Norman Hopper, John Saxon, is bitten by a US POW. Uh, Charlie Bukowski, who's a friend of his and a member of his platoon, uh, played by John Morgan, Giovanni uh, Lombardo Radici, who is infected with a virus which leaves people craving for human flesh, which is a pretty crazy concept and actually ahead of its time. If you think about it, this film might have been one of the many inspirations for 28 Days Later or films like that. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely a film that's ahead of its time in that regard. And, and I found that concept to be interesting. So he gets bit by the POW, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, some years later, uh, Hopper wakes up from a nightmare about this incident. I thought the whole sequences in Vietnam were decently well shot. There's a, a there's a nice bit of gunplay during this, these sequences and the uh, flamethrowers are used and, um, some actual stunt work and actual people getting lit on fire and stuff like that. So, you know, a decent little bit of some Vietnam flashback sort of stuff in the beginning. And then it flashes to Atlanta, Georgia, you know, years later. Uh, you have Hopper wakes up from his nightmare. He gets a phone call from Bukowski, who wants him to come and visit him because he's gotten released from the hospital, the mental hospital. He's supposedly all cured now. He wants to ask if he wants to come in for a drink. The call came at the wrong moment, though, as you have a young neighbor girl, play Mary, played by Cindy Hamilton, which is uh, really not her real name. Her name is uh, Cynthia de Carolas. And uh, she is trying to seduce him, and she's, like, really young, too. Like, this is, this is... This is pretty uncomfortable because she's was like 17 or something. And he's John Saxon is John Saxon. He was a grown man, but uh, tried to seduce him. So he turns down the invitation, actually, uh, because he so he can be with this girl, I guess, who's underage. And then Hopper falls for her charms and they're about to engage in oral sex. And he ends up biting her down there, down below. Uh, after hearing from this, his concerned wife that a Vietnam vet had barricaded himself in a mall, he gets into his car. And just as he is about to leave, Mary reveals that she enjoyed the bite in her pleasure place. And then after arriving on the scene, he convinces Bukowski to surrender to the police. While being hauled away to the hospital, Bukowski bites a police constable. So this whole there's a decent amount of the film that pretty much takes place in there like about 20 minutes or so that deal with this whole uh, showdown in a flea market where you have uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici's character who's it hold himself inside the up inside the flea market and this is what this he did this after he went to go see a movie and there was this couple that for some reason they just paid for a ticket so they can just make out I don't get that I really don't understand that I, I don't I don't get why you pay for a movie ticket just to go to the movie theater just so you can make out when you can do that at your apartment or your house. And you don't have to pay to go see a movie. I don't understand. Uh, can somebody explain to me what what the benefits are of just making out and having sex in a public movie theater are versus going and doing the nasty in the comfort of your own home? I'm just saying... There's more stuff that you can do there. You don't risk the, the you don't risk getting caught. You don't risk public exposure, and you don't in, in in this film's case you don't risk getting your neck bitten either. Because what happens is the 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 sex scene is happening. These these couples having sex in the theater in front of Giovanni Lombardo Radici, and he basically reverts to his cannibalism days back when he was a PFW and bites her in the neck. 
and he runs away, and then he gets chased by these uh, biker guys and these uh, his gang, and he goes into this flea market, grabs some guns, starts shooting at these guys who are chasing after him, and it's a decently tense sequence. Uh, practical effects when people get shot, you know, blood squibs and everything. Uh, there's a little bit of a t chase while this guy's on a motorcycle chasing him through the flea market. And I thought the film was pretty well directed by, uh, by, um, Antonio Margariti, who, uh, was known as Anthony M. Dawson, according to this film's, you know, pseudonyms that they had for a lot of the people involved with the production. And so he's now, then it becomes a standoff. He shot one guy, uh, on a bike. Then he shoots the, 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 one of the security guards. And then here comes the actual police. And you have this police captain who I really liked. He was a definitely a no nonsense, take no shit, you no, know, uh, no bullshit type guy, which, are, and I really like those type of characters. Uh, Wallace Wilkinson, Captain McCoy. I really liked his character. He had some fun lines of dialogue, too. Like when Giovanna Lombardo Radici is singing, he's singing a song while he's holed up in the flea market, and the cops are surrounding him. And uh, the deputy is telling the you know telling uh, Captain McCoy, he's like, he's like, hey, he's singing, and he's like, yeah, I don't care. He's gonna be singing out of his asshole when I'm done with him. <laughs> so I I, I, I like that. And so John Saxon shows up. He comes in, tells them that he knows who this guy is. He was uh, he he was his commanding officer in Vietnam. So he goes and calms the situation down. Gets uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici to drop the gun, uh, Bukowski to drop the gun, and basically walk out peacefully. Um, so you think, okay, things are things are you know, okay, things are fine now, right? Well, then things start to go pretty the hell in a handbasket pretty much because Hopper goes home after that, instructs his wife to wait for him in the house, walks in front of Mary's window. Later he admits to the incident and his wish to bite a fellow human to his wife. She's saying that's not who you are. She doesn't believe him. At the hospital, Bukowski and Tommy, played by Tony King, they get into a fight with the guards. Bukowski bites the leg of a nurse, Helen, who's uh, played by uh, actress Mae Heverly. And uh, Dr. Mendez, Ray Williams, who had, has a pretty bad dub job in this. Uh, and he calls Jane Hopper and tells her that Norman might be experiencing the same symptoms and that she should bring him over to the hospital for a checkup while he's listening in on the conversation, though. Uh, and this is this is what happens. is Then he leaves the house. So Hopper leaves the house after he hears about the conversation. The police get the coroner's report on the mall shootout and contains warnings of cannibalism. And at the same time, Jane meets Dr. Mendez. Like, and by bad dubbing, he sounds like he has like a southern accent, which does not fit with this guy's appearance. So maybe that's his real voice, but it doesn't look like it matches. Uh, so Dr. Mendez meets up with Jane, and Jane's been trying to seduce him, or she's been trying to seduce him, he's been trying to seduce her. And they meet at a fancy piano bar where it explains to her that the virus causes a biological mutation due to physical alteration. And Norman then voluntarily goes to the hospital and talks to a doctor about his symptoms, his well-founded suspicions of Dr. Mendez's intentions with his wife. The doctor then also takes a blood sample. At the police station, the bitten constable shoots a fellow cop, bites another cop, and ends up being shot by Captain McCoy, played by Wallace Wilkinson. Norman then comes across his sedated fellow vets, Charlie and Tommy, and uh, at the hospital, he experiences a flashback to the initial incident when he got bit, bit by an infected POW, which is Bukowski, and then the doctor then gets attacked by Helen while inspecting Hopper's blood sample. First, she bites off his tongue, and then she bashes his head in with a rock. In an ambulance, the bitten cop then gets aggressive before she dies. And in the hospital, Helen frees Tommy and Charlie. And then Norman kills a staff member who tries to notify the authorities. This 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 is basically this reminds me a lot of the film Rabbit as well by David Cronenberg. And definitely 28 Days Later, this idea of a virus that makes people become zombie cannibals. It's not really zombies, cannibals. And it, I thought it was pretty scary because, for one part, for one, it can spread really quickly, and you don't. There's really, it's a really hard thing to stop. Uh, two, 
just the idea of a disease that slowly makes you go, makes you, drives you insane, and also turns you into a cannibal. Like, those are two bad things all rolled up into one disease. It's a pretty shitty disease, pretty shitty virus. And, um, at the same time, it would be hard to really know what the symptoms are until somebody starts biting somebody. And even then, it would already be too late. Because once you know that person is infected, they bite you, you're infected, and then it's just a cycle of just of cannibalism. And um, I also like the fact that this film, this is one instance of a movie not explaining where this disease came from or how it came to be that didn't bother me. I didn't need to have an explanation for why, where this virus came from. Because honestly, that would just ruin the mystique of it, and it would just be what a generic like T virus or something. I mean, it's the T virus from from Resident Evil. That's the, that's the answer for everything, right? When it comes to a zombie or cannibal virus. Um. So I don't. I really don't know what they could have explained it as anyway. I'm just. I'm just glad that they didn't. But anyway, after this moment, though, after the everything's been revealed that it's a virus and and it causes people to become cannibals. Then the film starts to get pretty tedious for me. And I've read reviews where people feel that the complete opposite. They feel that the first 40 minutes or so, or hour of the movie, are the most boring and nothing much happens. And they really think the film picks up at the last half. Um, but for me personally, I don't feel that way. Because the film spent a lot of time... Uh, building up this John Saxon, John Saxon's character, and yes, he was kind of flirting with an underage girl, but yeah, he didn't really do anything with her. He he just bit her down there once, and then was like, "No, what I'm doing is wrong." And he, even later in the film, he's like, "She's looking at him, and he's basically looking the other way." He's just, he just, he realizes that he just, he just shouldn't be doing this. He just was having a hard time, going through a hard time in his life, and so on, and. His mind wandered and went somewhere else that he didn't really want it to. But for the most part, he's a likable character. And um, the performance is pretty good. And I like the stuff with Bukowski at the flea market. And I like the buildup and everything uh, to the eventual climax. But I don't like how the climax is set up. Because all of a sudden, after the hospital scene... John Saxon, I guess, is now one of the cannibals. He just teams up with these guys who have eaten and murdered a bunch of people already. And he just teams up with them. He teams up with them and it becomes almost like the Warriors. Where these group of cannibals are trying to go through the city while people are trying to attack them and trying to go after them. And they end up in the sewers somewhere and the police come out and go after them. And this is a scene that goes on for a while. And they're just... There isn't much suspense. There isn't much uh, because I don't care about what happens to these characters. I don't care about what happens to Bukowski or or uh, Tony King's character. I mean, they're, they're murderers. Like they just bit a bunch of people, caused this infection to spread. I mean, I don't really care. And then I didn't really buy John Saxon's character changing so quickly. I think it would be more interesting, and I think that would have really helped the film. Even though I still like the movie, and I honestly would say it's at least an average film, if not an above average movie for what it is, I would say that the I would have liked it a lot even more if it had a climax where you have a more a little bit more redeemable sort of moment for John Saxon. And they have that a little bit later in the film where he does redeem himself, but it just seems like they could have done something else with this climax. The film just kind of drags along when they get to the sewers, and you're just waiting for people to die. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, there's a little bit of action, a little bit of uh, gunplay and fisticuffs with the gang earlier that was trying to attack uh, uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici's character, trying to attack uh, um, Bukowski. And um, so, and by the way, the nurse, she's also with the group. They steal an ambulance, and they end up in the sewers. The cops are going after them. And, uh, but like I was saying, I think it would have been cool if you had John Saxon, maybe he fights the, the infection, maybe he ends up, uh, maybe instead of biting somebody else, because we don't really see him bite anybody, but when he joins them, you see, he definitely has blood on his lips. So he obviously must have bitten somebody. So I, I think it would have been cool if, well, maybe he bites some, the first person he bites is one of these, these group of cannibals. 
So it's like he takes out some of them. Like maybe he takes out the girl. Because she pretty much just got shot in a pretty lame way. So I think it would have been cool. It would have been better if John Saxon just took her out. And then maybe he sacrificed himself and to try to kill the rest of them. But then that doesn't really work for what they were setting up for the ending, which I actually don't mind. But I think it would be nice to have John Saxon fight it a little bit more and not just join them all of a sudden randomly. And this is just, I, I just, it just felt really forced. So anyway, Tony King's character, he gets lit on fire, which was a pretty decent effect. But Bukowski gets the best death. He gets sh gets a shotgun blast through the stomach, and it's a really effective shot. It, you could see you see the it's a practical effect. There's a giant hole in his stomach. Um, that was really well done. And John Saxon escapes. He got shot in the leg a little bit, but then he goes back to his wife's house, and she confronts him. He's dressing up in his old military uniform for some reason. And he's basically telling his wife, "Don't come near me. Get away from me." and he's thinking about going after her, eating her, but then here comes the doctor, who is, she, she thinks she's safe, but the doctor got scratched in the in the back of the neck, so now he's infected, so he goes to bite uh, John Saxon's wife, and he shoots, he shoots the guy. And because earlier he got shot by the doctor, but or, or, or by his wife, or by either, I think it was, I think it was by the, yeah, he got shot by, uh, I'm just, I'm just checking right here. Norman is hurt and dying. Uh, Dr. Mendez walks into the house. James run, runs, runs over to him, but he bites her as Norman shoots him. She He did actually bite her, so now she's infected. So then Jane points his gun at her own head. Uh, well, you know, the the gun that uh, John Saxon had. And pretty much they, they, they have a loving embrace one last time before they pretty much kill themselves. So it, it's a tragic ending, but it fits with the film, and it's kind of a way for John Saxon's character to redeem himself for the stuff that he did earlier, because he shoots the the doctor. Uh, but at the same time, it really isn't much rede re redemption because he still bit his wife, so she's still fucked. So it's kind of like you could have shot him earlier, or you could have bit him, eaten him, and then shot yourself. That that's kind of I think that actually would have been a better idea. Uh, he he should have he should have eaten the guy, then shot himself, and then his wife is still alive or something. So I mean, so that there's some some sort of redemption for the character. I mean, what what did he re he didn't really redeem himself in the end. Now more to think about it, he didn't really redeem himself that much. That he didn't stop the guy from affecting his wife. So you know, it is what it is. Um, and that's pretty much how the, then the film and you have the police officers come in and then you pretty much get the idea that the girl, uh, she's infected as well as her little brother and they've killed their aunt and they have her in the fridge and that's for, for, uh, for a nice late night snack later. And then that's pretty much the end of the movie. So yeah, the, the, the climax there could have been more of an apocalypse in Cannibal Apocalypse. There could have been a little bit more more of the stuff we saw with uh, uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radici's character who Bukowski gets shot in the stomach and you see a gaping hole. More stuff like that. Um, a little bit more action. Um, the, a, a, a climax that doesn't kind of drag on because you have characters that you don't care about what happens to them. It becomes this whole, oh, this ragtag group of cannibals are on the run. I, I don't give a shit. They're cannibals. They've been eating people and they're spreading infection. I, I, I don't really care about them. I like John Saxon, but I'm in these sequences, I'm like, why is he here? Why did he join this group? I guess it's because they have a connection with one another. I guess the same thing happens with the nurse. Like, why did she join them? But I guess if you're infected, you automatically have a connection with all the other people that are infected, which I don't understand that, but whatever. But, you know, yeah. The more I think about it, it's just okay. It's an average film. It's all right. But it's a time waster. It's definitely what I'd probably call a mediocre movie. But, I mean, that's better than what I've had gotten lately. I, 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 I was, that was pretty much what I wanted out of this movie. I was like, just be okay. And I'll be fine because I've been having a really bad uh, streak of just nothing but pr either poor 
or really, really bad movies in this marathon. So it was nice to get one that was just okay, had some things about it that I liked, and, uh, you know, th there were things about it that could be better, but overall, I thought it was well-paced. It didn't really bore me that much, even though you had the last half that was kind of dull because of the fact that you have these cannibals that I guess I'm supposed to root for now, which doesn't make any sense. And, uh, and it, but overall, I liked it. I liked it all right. I thought John Saxon did a good job. Um, I think it's probably a little bit better than its reputation suggests. And, uh, I wouldn't mind adding it to my collection someday. Uh, I watched it on a hard, on my hard drive through a, a download a, of a rip of the film I found online. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult to find this film to add to my collection because it's out of print. And the DVD by Image has features and stuff that I'd really be interested in watching. But the DVD's out of print. It's expensive. It's at least over 20 bucks, uh, you know, for the cheapest uh, price for one of the uh, uh, DVDs. I guess you could probably, this could be a film that you could, I, I could make an argument for being re-released. The original release is out of print. I'd be fine with a re-release. I think that'd be, that'd be nice. So I can actually get a, a copy of the film that's a little bit more affordable. But even then, the new release would probably be just around the same amount of money anyway. So <laughs> either way, it, but maybe it needs a better transfer. I don't know. The version that I watched, it, it, the transfer wasn't very good. So I don't know if that's the same one that's on the DVD. I don't think so because this one didn't even look like it was widescreen. Uh, it was just a weird sort of full screen thing. But um, but still, I, I I didn't mind the film. I'd recommend it to people who are who are blah, 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 blah. if I can fucking speak. I'd recommend it to people who are fans of Italian horror films and stuff like that. And but when you go into it, I also have to say this: it's not really your typical horror film. It's kind of hard for me to even call it, call it a horror film. Because there isn't really, it, other than the cannibal virus epidemic sort of angle and the cannibalism, that there really isn't much uh, horror about it. There's nothing supernatural. There's no zombies. So I think if you expect that kind of thing, you're definitely going to be disappointed by the film. It's a little bit more of a slow pace, slow build, a slow burn type flick. Um... But there's stuff about it I liked. I, I like, I, you know, I, I thought it was a time waster. John Saxon was good. I liked the guy who played the police captain. I liked the score. I thought the direction was pretty solid for the most part. Um, I, I like the plot. I think there's some things that could be worked around and done a little bit better. But for the most part, I like the story. And um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about uh, Cannibal Apocalypse. Except, except if I was in rate out of five stars, I, I would definitely give it three out of five. Originally, I was like above average, but then I thought about some more, and I'm like, I can't really do that because the climax, I, I have problems with it, and, there, and it is more of a slow-paced film that could have used more action, it could have used more gore, it could have used more uh, apocalypse, it could have used more apocalyptic settings and more apocalyptic things that happened in the movie. But uh, for what it is, it's it's not bad. Anyway, thank you for watching my review of Cannibal Apocalypse, and I will see you guys later. See ya.